Son 
scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing he bled and died to take away my sin then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come, with shout of acclamation and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God how great thou art then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou so much for that wonderful reminder this morning sister Rebecca thank you as well praise the Lord for that song amen how great thou art we serve a mighty God don't we amen young people you can be dismissed at this time I pray you have a wonderful time this morning learning about Jesus Christ in your class today we're going to be in the book of Mark this morning Mark chapter number 10 if you'll join me there Mark chapter number 10 this morning I'm glad in my life, thankful in my life, uh, that there came a time to where the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ was presented to me. And what a blessing that is. Uh, we're living in a dark world, in a dark society, but the gospel is still, still at work. Amen. Uh, Jesus Christ, the light of the world, is still present. And, and I'm so thankful for that. I'm, I'm thankful for his love and his mercy and We've heard songs this morning saying about him, how great he is, and he is. What a Savior we serve. And it's a wonderful day in a, in a Christian's life that they can go back to, and they can remember that moment of salvation to where you go from the dark to the light. Praise God for that. Praise God for that. May we never as Christians get over that. Right? It, it shouldn't be stale. It shouldn't be, yeah, well, that happened. Listen, it ought to be powerful in our life. We remember that day. Uh, today we're going to look at a man and we're going to see a picture of his life that is radically changed. There's going to be a picture of his physical life, but my friend, it is a picture of his spiritual life as well. As he goes from darkness to light. Praise God for that. Praise God. Uh, Mark chapter number 10. We'll begin our reading in verse number 46. Mark 10 and verse 46. We're introduced to a man by the name of uh, Bartimaeus, verse number 46, and they came to Jericho. This is Jesus Christ and his disciples. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he had hold his peace, but he cried the more a great deal, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still, commanded him to be called, and they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he casting his way as garment. Don't, don't, don't glance over that. Hold tight to that. 
And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way. Thy faith had made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight, get this, and followed Jesus in the way. What a blessing. What a blessing. We see a blind man receive his sight and follow Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. I'd like to bring a message entitled this this morning, A Sight to Follow. A Sight to Follow. Let us pray together. Father, thank you so much for your word today. Father, and its power and its impact in our lives. And Father, thank you so much for the gospel message, the gospel of your precious son, Jesus Christ, that brings sight to the blind spiritually. Father, and we thank you for that. And Father, we pray today in our small group that's gathered this morning, there may be someone who's lost. There may be someone who has questions about their salvation. Father, we pray for that soul today. We pray that they could receive assurance and absolute knowledge that they're saved and born again. And Father, we pray for those needs today. There may be a Christian here today whose walk has grown cold, and maybe they're not following like they once did. Father, we pray for their need as well. Father, there may be other burdens here that we know nothing about, but Father, your word is powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Father, I pray today that your Holy Spirit would impact our lives. Father, we, we look for change today. Father, we need help. Father, I pray you just help us now. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' precious name, we humbly pray. Amen. November 30th, 1991, out in a little city of Kalinga, California, something very traumatic happened. Uh, that's a dry, dusty area of California. And the winds can get up there, and it causes dust storms. Now, here in North Carolina, I don't know if I've ever experienced a, uh, a terrible dust storm. Sure, we have thunderstorms, and sure, we have hurricanes and those type things. But me personally, I've never gone through a dust storm, a dust storm that is blinding. But on this date, on November 30th, 1991, near Kalinga, along Interstate 5, there was a mighty dust storm that came through, a terrible dust storm. In fact... Fourteen people lost their lives on that day from collisions on this interstate because of a, a dust storm. Now, what happened during this dust storm? Well, they lost their visibility. They couldn't see where they were going, and they were going up this interstate blinded and bouncing into one another, bouncing into guardrails, and what a terrible, terrible situation that was. And as we think about this dust cloud coming and bringing blindness to those folks on that day, on that occasion, Friend, there's a world that's out there today that is spiritually blind. Going through life, listen, trying to navigate a life that they can't see, that they can't understand, and there's collisions, and there's crashes, and there's problems that come about. But my friend, there's a cure. You see, on this day, a wind came through and moved that dust storm out of the way. And my friend, Jesus Christ came and died on the cross for you and I so that you and I can have sight. We can see spiritually, and what a blessing it is to have that sight, to have that knowledge of truth. And for in my prayer for you today is if you're lost, that you'll receive your sight today, that you'll trust Jesus Christ, and he'll open your eyes this morning. That's my prayer for you today. Maybe you're here this morning. Maybe you're saved, and you've just grown cold. Maybe you're not walking like you once did. Listen, I, I pray this morning you would shed some things and walk with Jesus Christ. Be in tune with him. The Lord, my friend, I want, to, I want to make this statement. He is available for our time of need. If you're lost this morning, listen, you have a need that is so great you don't even understand it. You're blinded to it. Maybe you're here this morning as a saved person. You have a need as well. Whatever the need is, may we bring it to the foot of the cross this morning and leave it with Jesus Christ. So with the help of the Lord, may we see from Scripture just a few principles today about the greatest need that we have, the greatest need in this man's life, and some decisions and some steps that he took. Notice when we first, the first thing that we can notice about Bartimaeus is he had sight, restrict, he was in a sight restricted condition. Sight restricted condition. Verse number 46. And they came to Jericho as he went out of Jericho uh, with his disciples and a great number of people. 
Blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. Here we're introduced to this man. Now, this is uh, in the Synoptic Gospels. Uh, Mark, uh, Matthew also mentions another man or two men that was with him. Here, Mark mentions the one, and I think he was probably the more vocal of, of the two. Uh, he was really letting his voice be heard, so I think that's why Mark uh, recorded him and gave his name. He's the only one that mentions his name. But in reality, this man, he's, he's by here, he's by the highway side. He's, he's literally, in our term, in our vernacular, he's in a side ditch. He's right on the edge of the road of this passageway, and he's begging. And likely he had been by there many, many times in his life. Maybe that was the place that his family would bring him to every day so that he could beg, so that he could receive provision. Maybe he had been there many, many times, but today was going to be a different day, wasn't it? It was going to be a life-changing day on this occasion, and praise the Lord for it. We see this uh, many times in Scripture where a family would bring a, a person uh, to a particular place. Remember the man who sat by the beautiful gate, and he was sitting there begging? And here comes Peter and John. You remember that occasion? And they came by and listened. Uh, the Lord healed him on that occasion here. Same, very similar situation. This man's here. Well, let's notice a few conditions that he had. First, he's blind. He couldn't see. He was physically blind. And that's a terrible condition. If, if you've ever met someone who has that condition, it's, listen, I can't imagine losing my sight. I have a friend who lost his sight in his early 20s. Terrible, terrible condition to be in. Uh, Sister Bobby, she works with folks who are enduring this physical impairment. But here, that's what this man was in, in encountering majority of his life, uh, the Bible says. And it's hard to imagine this. So he's blind. Not only is he blind, he's begging. Here's a man who's living in a different society than the society you and I live in. He didn't have the helps. He didn't have the needs uh, that could be fulfilled as, as our world uh, takes care of folks like this. But he's out having to beg. Beg to survive, beg to, to have substance uh, in life. Uh, he couldn't make a living. So here we see he's blind, he's begging. But not only that, uh, spiritually speaking, he's spiritually blind. But the light bulb's about to come off in his life. He's about to have some changes to happen. And, and friend, many today, maybe you're not blind physically, but if you're lost this morning and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're spiritually blind this morning. And I want to show you the light of Jesus Christ today. 2 Corinthians chapter number 4, verse number 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Aren't you glad today that there's a time in your life where that light shined on you? Praise God for that. And when we're blinded, we can't discern spiritual things. Listen, it's hard for someone. That's why folks get so confused and so misconstrue the Bible. And uh, Brother Robert talked so eloquently this morning on the Old Testament and connecting it to the New Testament. But there's folks who are lost today that would grab a hold of these things and get them all jumbled up. Why? Because they can't discern spiritual truth. Why? Because they're blind spiritually. 1 Corinthians 2.14, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolish unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. That's what the Word of God tells us. It's hard for a lost person to realize and come to the understanding that there's a God who loved them enough that he laid his life down for them. We live in a cruel world. We live in a selfish society. And it's hard sometimes in our, in our words to get that message across to someone that, listen, there's someone who loves you enough that he gave his life. And that's why the word of God is the power. That's why the gospel is the power. That's why it's the Holy Spirit who pricks the heart. You and I can't do a thing. It is the word of God. Every person is born spiritually blind. Every person sitting in here was at some point in your life spiritually blind. The Bible says in Romans 3.10, as it is written, there is none righteous no, not one for all have sinned to come short of the glory of God. Romans 5.12 states, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death has passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Every person born this way, in this terrible shame. Not only was he spiritually blind for him, but he was spiritually poor. He's out begging 
on the street so he could have substance for life. But friend, he was spiritually poor on this occasion as well. Matthew 6, 19 says this, Lay not up for yourself treasures on the earth where the moth and rust do corrupt, but thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust do corrupt, where thieves do not break through to steal, for where your treasure is, there your heart is also here. In this moment, this man was just thinking about temporal, just to get through day to day. And then we're going to notice here in just a few moments, there was a magnificent change in his life. And he put those things away. He began to focus on Jesus Christ. So he was spiritually uh, poor as well. Well, how do we uh, become spiritually rich? Well, by accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And what a blessing that is. The Bible says in John 1, 12, But as many as received him to them, gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Do you know, if you're saved this morning, your father has cattle on a thousand hills. Amen. Wow. Rich beyond measure. But a lot of times we as Christians go around just so depressed and so down. But God is providing so much for us. And praise God for that. Galatians 3.26, for you're all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Psalm 50.10, for every beast of the forest is mine and the cattle upon a thousand hills. That's our God. That's our Father this morning if you're saved. So we've noticed here with this man, Bartimaeus, he's sitting here by the roadside and we notice his condition that he's in. And if you're lost this morning, whether you're blind physically or not, listen, you're spiritually blind if you're lost and you're in this condition. But notice secondly, we see his sorrowful cry in verse number 47. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus Thou son of David, have mercy on me. He cries. He, he yells out. I think he was yelling on that day for Jesus. How often do we do that? How often do we cry out to the Lord for help when we're in a time of need? There's many times I think that we just try to harness it ourselves and try to go about life and maintain uh, the best that we can. But listen, there's times that we need to cry out to Jesus Christ. To call out to him. We've all heard of stories of folks, listen, that are going through a hard time. Maybe um, get sick on the road. Have you ever uh, went past a fire station or drove past an EMS station and seen them outside working on someone inside of a car? Uh, a lot of times when someone gets sick on the road, they know where help is, right? And there's no time to delay to call 911. They take them straight to the fire department. When I was on in Mount Airy, there's been many a times that I've heard over the dispatch of someone showing up at the fire department. Why do they go there? Because they, because they know there's help there. And here on this occasion, Bartimaeus is laying by the side of the road. He hears commotion. He can hear folks walking. He can hear the mumble and the grumble among the crowd. And he realizes, hey, this is Jesus that's coming. And he began to cry out. He knew that there was help on the horizon. He had heard maybe about his miracles, maybe about some of the things he has done. Notice how he addresses him in verse 47. When he began to cry out, say, Jesus, thou son of David. He recognized in that moment the Messiah, son of David. And say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Listen, he recognized who was near in this sorrowful cry. He recognized the commotion. Friends, can I, can I encourage you this morning? Jesus knows what's going on in your life, whatever it may be, and he's near. He's near. He cares about you. He's concerned about you. Here in this man's moment of sorrow, in his moment of sadness, Jesus Christ was steps away. And friend, in this dispensation that you and I live in, it's even sweeter. Did you know that? If you're a born again, saved child of God, he's dwelling in you today. Through his Holy Spirit. Praise God for that. Not only did he recognize who was present, but he prayed to him. He prayed for him to have mercy on him. In John 14, 13, And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. It's what the Word of God says. And what, what confidence for you and I today. As we go through life and we go through trials and we go through loss and we go through burdens and we go through surgeries and we go through cancer scares and all the things that affect us. 
May we cry out to Jesus Christ because he cares, and because he's near, because he's present, my friend. He prayed to Jesus. Hebrews 4.16 tells us, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. How many of you have been in a time of need before? Certainly I have. Listen, we, we probably went through a time of need this week and didn't even realize it. But we ought to pray out to God, reach out to him. Notice he asked for mercy. He didn't say, hey, Jesus, come give me my sight. No, no, no. He asked for mercy, didn't he? That's what he was pleading for. Lord, have mercy on me. He wasn't saying, Lord, you owe me this. Listen, come over here and do this for me. No, no, no. He prayed for mercy. I think he recognized his condition. I think he understood uh, the trouble that he was in, the, the peril that he was in in his life. 2 Peter 3, 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promises. Some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. We have a merciful God, don't we? Listen, I don't deserve salvation, and friend, neither do you. But praise God by his grace and by his mercy, he saved us. Here, Bartimaeus, listen, he didn't deserve for Jesus Christ to come and heal him. But Jesus Christ did because he loves him. We see the sorrowful cry. We see the sad condition. Notice the sad constraint in verse number 48. The sad constraint. Here, this happens today, I think. Notice what the crowd said in verse 48. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal that thou son of David have mercy on me. Here, I think we see an age-old problem here. Shh. Listen, do you realize you're dirty? You're poor? Listen, this is Jesus who's walking through. He doesn't have time to listen to you. What a shame. What a, what a travesty. May we as Christians never have that attitude. Listen, folks need help today. And we ought to be willing to show them the gospel, show them the scriptures, and not turn them away. Not hush their cries. They're reaching out for Jesus Christ. Here, that's what they were doing. They were trying to hush him. They tried to silence him. That word many, that means there was a great multitude. They charged him. That, that word charge, it means to rebuke. It means to admonish. They're, they're telling him, listen, you need to be quiet. Don't speak to him. What a shame. What a shame. Savior of the world's walking through, and they're telling him to be quiet. Maybe they said things like, Jesus is here. He doesn't have time for you. He's busy. Look at you. Look at your mess. Don't talk to him. But before we go criticizing these folks, right? Because it's easy for us to look at scriptures and say, boy, them were some rotten individuals. Remember what his own disciples did on that occasion when the young children wanted to come to him? They wanted to come to Jesus. No, 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 don't, don't come near him. But here's what Jesus said in Mark 10. Verse number 13, just a few verses prior to this. And they brought young children to him that he should touch him. And his disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased. And said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. May I say today, we ought to have that mindset. That's Jesus' mindset. Amen? Listen, we ought to share the gospel with any who's willing to receive it. doesn't matter what they look like. It doesn't matter where they're from. It doesn't matter their condition. Listen, Jesus died for all. And praise God for that. Mark eleven twenty five. 25. And when you stand praying, forgive. If you ought against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. Listen, there's a lot today that go around with that attitude. Not going to forget uh, what someone's done. Listen, we ought to forgive, forget, and move on with life. Amen. Not only do we notice that he had this, uh, the others tried to silence him. But notice his persistence. He cried uh, the more. He, he didn't let their negativity affect his seeking the Lord. And friend, if you're here this morning and you're lost, don't you allow someone's negativity to hinder you from seeking the Lord Jesus Christ. He wants to save you this morning. Don't, don't let someone else hinder you from walking with your Savior, Jesus Christ. If, you could, if we could block out the discouraging remarks of men, I tell you, we'd be a lot better off, wouldn't we? Preacher, that's easy for you to say you're a preacher. Nobody ever says anything mean to you. You're right. You're right. Well, I tell you what we need to do is just focus on Jesus Christ. 
Amen. If we, if we would all focus on him, our, I think our world would be so much better. And Galatians 6, 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Christian, if I could encourage you this morning, keep on keeping on. Here, this man, though a lost man, though coming to Christ, listen, he kept on keeping on. Praise God, so should we. The evangelist George Whitfield, he went through a very similar incident in his life. He was a tremendous preacher, fireball preacher of his day. Uh, and he would receive letters. Today, you get emails and texts and things, phone calls. In his day, they would write you a letter and tell you how much they disagreed with you and how much they didn't like you and all those sorts of things. Well, he received a letter on one occasion, and I'm telling you, they were just brutal to him. But he responded with a letter, and here's how cordial he was. He said, I thank you for your hearty letter and for you and my other enemies who are against me. I know worse things about myself than you will ever say about me. With the love of Christ, George Whitfield. That was his response. Listen, yeah, you can say some pretty rough stuff about me, but I know stuff far worse than what you even know. But Jesus Christ still saved me the same, and praise God for that. So that was his response. And friend, can I say that you and I ought to be like Bartimaeus, and you and I ought to be like George Whitfield. And when the negativity comes, keep on keeping on. Keep on crying out for Jesus Christ. Keep on following after him. So we see his condition. We see his cry. We see the constraint. But notice in verse number 49, that sweet comfort, that sweet comfort that came his way. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called, and they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. Listen, his cries had been heard. Jesus Christ stopped. He paused in the middle of the commotion. Listen, Christ could hear those folks telling him to be quiet. Christ could hear the noise of the crowd, and Jesus stopped. Think about that for just a moment. The Lord stopping, pausing. May I remind you, he's marching. He's making his way to the cross, my friend. Here in just a short period of time, Jesus Christ is going to go to the cross he was busy. Listen, he's teaching. He's doing all these things. But there's a blind man in a side ditch. And Jesus Christ took time for him. Friend, wherever you're at today, Jesus Christ has time for you. He stood still. He stood still. Praise God for that. What a blessing that is, my friend. He cares for you today. Matthew 10, 29. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore you are all more valuable than many sparrows. So Jesus Christ loves you today. He cares for you today. Whatever you have happening in your life. If you, listen, if your life is a mess, can I say Jesus Christ will love you out of that mess. Praise God for his love. Praise God for his mercy. Praise God for his care. He cares enough that he went to an old rugged cross for you and I and laid his life down. Romans 5, 8, but God commendeth his love towards us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. In spite of the fact that you're a sinner and I'm a sinner, don't deserve anything, Jesus Christ laid his life down for you and I. Notice he stood still. Notice the Lord called him. The Bible says, and commanded him. That word command, it means he spoke with authority. And Jesus said, hey, son, come over here. I need to talk to you. The Lord uh, was there. He, he heard those who tried to hush him, and Christ called him. Can I say something this morning? He's not going to put a hog ring in your nose and drag you to salvation. He won't do that. But he will knock at your heart's door this morning. And friend, if you're here this morning and you're lost, he is knocking. He's knocking today. He wants you to be saved. He won't force you. Don't buy into that Calvinistic theology that you're going to be saved and all these sorts of hogwash. Listen, he's calling you today to salvation. He's knocking at your heart's door. Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Bartimaeus on that day, listen, he heard the Lord knocking. And he answered the door. Praise God for that. The Lord brought him comfort. The Lord brought comfort to this man. Notice what the, the folks there said. Be of good comfort. Rise. He calleth thee. Individuals today seek comfort in all sorts of ways, don't we? 
all sorts of ways. Maybe it's material things. Listen, if I had more of this, I'd be happy. If I had more of that, I'd be happy. If I had a bigger house, a, a better car, a, a bigger uh, bank account, I'd be happy. But no, no, no. There's one who can bring comfort. And his name is Jesus Christ. That true, perfect comfort. The second Corinthians 1, verse 3, Blessed be of God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, the God of all comfort who comforted us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them which are in trouble by the comfort wherewith ourselves are comforted of God. You get what that's saying? Listen, you and I can comfort others from the comfort that God has already given us. You talk about our comforting God. That's the comfort that this man experienced that Bartimaeus experienced on this day. And praise God for that. I want to ask you something this morning, church. Is there one here today that needs comfort? Maybe you've got a burden that nobody else knows about. Maybe you're saved, secured, assured, heaven bound, hallelujah. But there's something that's eating at you. Would you get comfort from the Lord today? He's here to help you. He's here to help you. If you'll just give it to him, cry out to him as Bartimaeus did. We see the condition he was in. We see his cry. We see the constraint. We see the comfort that the Lord brought. Notice lastly the splendid change. The splendid change. Verse number 50. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received sight and followed Jesus in the way. I want you to notice the change that came about in this man's life. Notice he went from sitting on a roadside begging to walking with Jesus Christ. Remember your salvational experience. Wasn't it the same way? You went from begging and, and hoping in something to walking with Jesus Christ. Praise God. Notice he, he took off something here and he casting away his garment. This is a beautiful picture here. Don't, don't miss this. Listen, in that day, a beggar, especially a blind beggar, would wear a coat it was probably to protect them from the elements because they couldn't see, they couldn't get around. But also, they would take this coat and they would lay this coat out in front of them to where when folks come by, if they were to offer them something to help them, it would be gathered in that coat. So, in a sense, this was this man's provision, this coat that he was wearing. This is what he was trusting in. This is what was getting him from point A to point B in life was this coat. Because can you imagine having to fill around out there in that sand and that rocky place trying to find these coins that folks had dropped for you? But notice what he does is immediately when he trusts Jesus and he begins to follow Jesus, what happened to that coat? He left it laying there, didn't he? Threw it off. Those things that he had trust in and that thing that he was receiving his provision in, he laid it aside. And Christian, the moment you and I trusted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, new creature in Christ, that unfaithfulness, that untrust should have been left in the, in the, in the backside of our life behind us. May I say when we come to Christ as a lost, we'll lose that self-trust, lose that unbelief. And we must come to Christ and, and just trust him. And that's exactly what this man did. He left that coat laying right there. Romans 10, 9 and 10. That thou shalt confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. It's that simple, friend. To trust Jesus Christ today for the salvation of your soul. Well, Christian, this morning maybe you're saved. Born again, but maybe for some reason, somewhere in your life, you've decided to pick that coat up again. Maybe you haven't lost your salvation. I'm not saying that. I'm not propagating that. But maybe you've picked that up. Maybe it's an ego thing. Maybe it's a pride thing that you're trusting in, that you've put that coat back on. Listen, when folks saw this man in that day, that coat gave him away. They knew who he was. That's Bartimaeus, that blind beggar. They knew him by his coat. But when he dropped that coat and he began to follow Jesus Christ, he was a new person. Christian, maybe today you've picked your coat back up. Maybe you're known as a prideful person, an egotistical person, someone who's dabbling in something we shouldn't dabble in. I want to encourage you this morning to lay that coat down and walk with Jesus Christ. Follow after him. That's exactly what this man did. 
He made the request. He came to Jesus. He received a healing. The Lord said, what shall I do to you? The man said that I might receive sight. And Jesus said unto him, go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. It wasn't him coming to him. It wasn't his work. No, no, no. It was his faith in Jesus Christ that made him whole. And the most beautiful part of this whole story is right at the end. Jesus said unto him, go thy way, thy faith that made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Here's a man who had never seen light. Here's a man who had never seen anything. He could have bolted and ran home. He could have bolted and ran to the tavern of the day. He could have bolted and went anywhere he wanted to go. But where did he want to be? With Jesus Christ following him. Christian, I want to encourage you this morning. We serve someone who is a sight to follow. When that man received his sight, he realized who stood before him. And Jesus Christ is a sight to follow. Praise God for him. Praise God for his love. Listen this morning. The Lord's available in your time of need, in my time of need. Whatever it is that you're dealing with, whatever's hindering you, give it to Jesus Christ this morning. He loves you today. Listen, he wants you to lay that coat off, and he wants you to follow him. Praise God for that. Listen, if you're here this morning, you're lost. Would you come to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? That's your biggest need this morning. You're spiritually blind. And may the gospel of Jesus Christ light your eyes this morning. And for those Christians who are here, listen, you may be dabbling in something y'all not dabble in. Why don't you lay it aside and walk with Jesus today. Father, Lord, we love you today. We'd like to thank you for joining us today on our live stream service. We pray that you were encouraged, that you were blessed, and that you were challenged by God's Word. If we can be of any assistance to you, please feel free to reach us at our email below. We pray that you have a wonderful day, and God bless.